The Studi is a beauty that is different by design. Up front, you'll find high style to the grill. Clean sweeping lines. That's a all right. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Studebaker National Museum. I'm, Pat, I'm Pastor Lang. I'm the Executive Director of the Museum, and it's a joy to see you all out here today. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this very special evening. Um, it's part of a number of series that we have at the museum here. And Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> Briefly, uh, <laughs> please uh, remember to silence your phones. We don't want any of that normal disruption during this. Um, and also enjoy yourself tonight. This is a very special evening where Anthony will be giving you a presentation and then we'll be joined by Dr. Joshua Deal, a tremendous asset and really made this whole project and the exhibition out there possible. Uh, he was with the Logan Center when we began this process and is now a professor at Notre Dame. Um, He's just an incredible resource to the community as the Logan Center, so we thank our partners there very much for uh, this effort. So without any further ado, we'll let Anthony take it away. Hi, my name is Anthony Schmidt. Welcome. Next. In case you haven't seen, this is Eric Shiro's news story about me from about three years ago. Let's give it a play. Anthony Schmidt is 12 years old. He has been granted the gift of obsession. He is capable of a singular focus. His eye for detail boggles the mind. These gifts have come to him in the form of autism. So what autism does is, you how the, it comes the things, the thoughts come into your mind fast. Yeah. And then their brains are all like numbers, and they like numbers, and even things. I think in autism there's a lot of anxiety that people experience. So they use their special interests kind of as a calming mechanism. Anthony has a special interest. It is cars. So today this is my car collection. So I have out here to out here. Oh my goodness. And then we can, and I even have still some in the windows. All kinds of cars. He wraps up his world in cars. They are in his drawers and in his closet. There are pictures of cars on the walls. There are cars on shelves, old cars and new ones, separated by era. Like this is the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and then the 70s or over here. His eye for detail is such that he can tell you the model and make of almost every car ever made. You see a car. I can name it. For real. What's that car? It's a Chevrolet Bel Air. What year? 1957. What's that car? The Chevrolet Nomad, which has the same 1957, and this is the same front end. Downstairs, there's a collection of posters that he loves. 1941 Plymouth pickup. Yeah, but the 1886 Carl Benz. And he likes seeing old cars in natural settings, like this 32 Ford Coupe. Only, it's not a natural setting, is it? It's all an illusion created from this amazing boy's mind. Those pictures on the wall in his bedroom, the pictures downstairs, Anthony took those pictures. None of them are real cars. They are from his collection of models. <laughs> it happens like this. Anthony has a little workshop. He goes over the models, makes them look rusty sometimes, paints on patina. On this day, Anthony shows up at a park with a box. His mom and assistant, Ramona, follows with a toy barn. He finds a spot. Okay, here we go. He proceeds to create a scene, a barn in a field surrounded by forgotten classic automobiles. Ford Fairlane, a Porsche 356B, a Mercury Turnpike, Chevrolet Impala. He looks mm. and thinks. Mm. When the perspective is perfect, the scale spot on, he takes his pictures and the little world he's created comes roaring to life. It's truly because of the autism. It's not despite 
the autism, it's because of it. Ramona started sharing his pictures some time back. The reaction was overwhelming. She started a Facebook page and the followers came in droves. There's like 142,000 of them. Wow. With the help of a Kickstarter campaign, they made a book. It's beautiful and has sold a thousand copies. Look at the art that exists because of one boy's gift of obsession. Look at what Anthony has been able to create. Okay. Not long ago, a police department in New York sent Anthony this picture. It was from a crime scene. They couldn't identify the make and model of the car. I can just tell by the, by the wheels and the, the wheel style and the rear windshield. The windows on the back always has that scoop. And I said it's a 2007 Mercury Montego. The crime was solved. An arrest was made. Oh wait, and this is Nardo Land? Yeah. There is a place in Maltby called Nardo Land. Ron Nardoni, the man who owns it, loves the 1950s, and he has created a life-sized illusion in much the same way that Anthony has created miniature ones. How long have you liked cars? All your life? Yes. Cool. We arranged for the two of them to meet. The results were magical. This is a 38 Chev. Old pickup right there. A 67. Well, I have more vehicles than you could imagine. Oh, yeah. See, look at them oh, all. Oh, you have an old Buick Roadmaster? Yeah. About how many would you say you have? Oh, I don't know. I'd never count them, buddy. But one question in here. Which, yeah. Which one's your favorite in oh, here? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be hard to pick, I guess. Same deal with me. I can't choose favorites. You're a good guy, buddy. I'm sure glad you came to see me. You have amazed people with your art and your knowledge. That's good. And you've shown people that a guy with autism can kick butt, right? Yeah, he can do, yes, and then you can set your mind to whatever you want. Things are not always what they seem, like a car on a gravel road, like a kid with a disability. If Anthony teaches us anything, it's that we must look closer, try to understand more that we should pay attention to nuance, and that the rough patches, the irregularities, even perceived flaws, are what make old cars, and sometimes young, obsessed, creative boys, flawless. So that's how it all started. Then my first TV interview was by Michael Driver in 2019. Next slide. Oh, there it is, right there. Long time ago. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about the platform. We, so this is how I, so all these platforms, we either make them out of a, a two by four you can get at Home Depot, or and then I use grass. So that's actually baking soda I use for the snow on that one. I, there's one famous river road I used, Flex Seal is the water. <laughs> I just think that's coming up. Okay, so the cell phone to canvas. I download the images from my phone to my computer and I print them onto a canvas, which can be slapped onto a frame. Okay, it's social media is responsible for my fame. I run the accounts. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, <coughs> and YouTube, Patreon, LinkedIn. These are my numbers today. I just started YouTube not too long ago. A gift to remember. Back when I was 12 year old, Greg Wilkinson saw my photos online and was moved. Gave me this car. When people asked him why I did it, I said, I don't know, he just felt I should have it. You see, Greg has autism too, and I reminded him of himself at my age. He wanted him to make a difference, so the Woodenville Car Club made a big parade presenting the car to me. In 1957 Ford Custom. It needs new paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the next car. So the next slide is uh, the 
So Greg's gift inspired me to buy my second car, which is a 1959 Stewart Baker Silver Hawk. And then just recently, not too long ago, I bought a 1954 Chevy 3100. So I own about four, if you count the RV I own. <laughs> <laughs> the 76 GMC motorhome, the one from Stripes. Nice. It won't sell any of my vehicles, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Last summer, I decided to do a series of photos of school parking lots. So this is my 1960s one. I made a 50s one, a 40s one, 20s, 30s, and a 10s up to the Carl Benz era. And I did modern ones too from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and then to the 2000s. So, so there's a very detailed Studebaker. I got these two very detailed cars, a 49 Merc Wagon and a Studebaker Starlight from 49 that came with the luggage. I decided to do a theme photo shoot outside the local train museum <laughs> with a 124 scale Dan Bergman vehicles. Another historical photo shoot with a 1913 Ford, Ford Panel truck, Dark Daniels. The day I was, the new was filming me is next. Okay, next. Okay. 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 Oh, there it is. Fine. Yeah. 19. Okay, so this is a 1959 Chrysler Imperial. And then the car in the back is my real 1959 Studebaker Silver Hawk. I, I made a one to one scale of it, too. Yeah. This is the Carter's Lake Park. So I used Connect Sand is the beach there. It's a 1948 Ford Woody Wagon. I think that the Kinetic Sand is more realistic because of the texture. This is Burgermaster banner right here. It's set up in, so this photo is set in 1961. That Burgermaster was originally established in 1952, so I, I made it look like it was a, a nine-year-old building. With like era correct car in it. I even got that one in the shop, the real one. <laughs> I have a match up miniature and they kind of like. I did it. Okay, Burgermaster 2. Okay, next slide. This is that, so that's Burgermaster 2. We got some 57 Ford Marilyn, some Corvettes, Plymouths, so we got a 54 Chevy there, I see. Okay, next. Okay, so this is a fire station shot I did for the first responders. I did it to a tribute of the 9-11. The empty booth symbol the firefighters that have passed away. Next step. Triple X root beer. In Issaquah. <laughs> that in 1960. So we got a 1956 Buick is the car in the front, 58 Pilot and Cadillac there. I decided to do my own car show with my miniatures. Next, Cut Shop, which was built in 1976. So I did a 1970s theme photo shoot with the famous 1976 Jack and Wagon there. <laughs> Next up, the River Road. So I used the water, I made, I made the water out of Flex Seal. And the rest of it is styrofoam, the grass and everything. Okay. Next. So this is a 1930s church scene <clears throat> built by Philip Cruz, and the cars are set are like Model Ts and stuff. So it's set in 1931. That photo. Okay. Next. Okay, next one, this is a, the photo shoot that broke the internet, got millions of views, and it, it, no one still believes it's a scale model of a 2016 BMW race car. So this is like half of my collection here. I own, so this is just one room, I own three rooms, and I own over 4,500 now. <laughs> 
But back then it said, I had 3,000, but I made that a long time ago. <laughs> Those shelves in that picture are full. So the next step is my workshop where I build and modify cars. I think it's a video. Is it? So there I am working on my 1998 Cadillac Seville. I'm doing a chassis swap with a 59 Eldorado. People, people who beat, this is people who, who beat automotive history. So the Bertha Benz was the first driver ever of the 1886 Carl Benz. And it would not be today, if we wouldn't have cars today, it wouldn't have been for a woman refusing to give, give up. So uh, all the different famous people I met. This fellow right here is going to ask me a few questions. <laughs> Good job. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to have an interview and I'm going to ask the whole audience. They're going to ask me questions, I'm going to answer them. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, 
Well, it's such an honor to be able to sit up here with you, and I have to warn you, uh, so I write down my questions to help me out. I might ask you some questions that I asked you a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but that's just because I want to make sure everybody else can, can hear them, if that's okay. Yes. Okay, awesome. So thank you so much for coming and doing this with us. This is amazing. I showed uh, your post on Facebook, and I have some friends who are race car drivers, and I had so many people super excited and jealous that I was gonna be able to sit up here and talk to you because of your work. There's so many people of all ages who really appreciate what you do. So, uh, and you can tell by all the people that are here uh, in this community how awesome it is what you do. Now, I, the first question I wanted to ask you and something that you said, you said you had how many full-size cars that you own already? Well, uh, four full-size ones and two ride-on cars. So probably about six altogether, count two ride-on pedal cars. So you have six cars and you don't have your license yet, right? I do have a, I have a learner's permit. Oh. <laughs> All that will get me is just to, I just started to be allowed to go on the freeway. Okay. <laughs> With your learner's <laughs> permit, which was the first car that you chose to drive? Uh, first, well, uh, probably the 57 Ford Custom, and then after that, I did all the classics, and I went to work to her 2010 RAV4. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, how is it driving the older cars versus her RAV4? Uh, well, the older cars are like more like time travel. You get to you have to like really step on it. You get more of the gas feel with her car just like drives itself because it's newer. Yeah. <laughs> so newer drives, like, which one is more fun to drive? Probably the classics. Yeah, okay. I agree. The classics are more fun to drive. Yeah. Now one of those is a Studebaker and, and this group really loves the Studebaker. What's special about the Studebaker Silverhawk? Well that the uh, everything most it's mostly original from factory other than the rebuilt engine in it. Mm -hmm. And now you're working on some of those full-size cars yourself, A right? little bit. Yeah. I have a few, uh, some help from friends, too. Yeah. So what sort of things have you done to the cars that you own already? Uh, I added new bumper guards on. The, I put the, the interior. I detailed it, polished it. Yeah. Like just perfecting. Mm-hmm. And how did you learn how to do those things? Did you learn, you know, by watching things on the internet, or you know, you said some people were helping you? Uh, just experience, just trying out different things and seeing what works and what doesn't. Yeah, it's really interesting. Now, about your photography, where do you get your ideas for your pictures? Like some of them are such cool ideas, like uh, those, the pictures of the school with uh, all the cars, where do you get those ideas? Uh, old pictures and old sceneries from times. Yeah. Like, like early, like 40s, 50s, and 60s sceneries, like by coffee. Yeah, so you so you look through you look through pictures that your your <laughs> that are older pictures and you use that to help you come up with your ideas. Yes. Yeah. Now, where, how did you come up with the idea of doing perspective? Because you, you, you make these cars, like they're in these little scenes, and they have these big scenes behind them. Where did you come up with that idea? Uh, always thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, it, and it's amazing. What, of all the photographs that you've taken, what was the hardest one to do? Hardest? Yeah. Hard one. Hmm. Probably the UPS one. Yeah. So what happened one time is I'm going to, so, I'm, so it's a Sunday, I have a scale of a UPS truck. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's clo it was, the compound was closed, but for some reason, the gates open. I drive in, <laughs> <laughs> I take a photo of the miniature UPS truck, but then I went done, I turn around, and then I can't get out, we're stuck. <laughs> oh, no, stuck. We, we try to call the police first, but finally the security guard shows up and he's pissed. <laughs> 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 and then, and then the thing is, I never come back there again. <laughs> <laughs> but you 
got the photo, right? Yes. You got the photo, and a good artist always has to do that. So, I wanted to ask you a little bit. It seems like you're able to see things that a lot of the rest of us can't see. You're able to come up with these ideas. And so, so your mom said in the video, she said it was because of your autism. So what does it mean to have autism? Um, this means that you're different from the rest of the people. Uh-huh. How, how do you think autism helps you? Help, help, help me a little bit, not much though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had a friend uh, one of my friends has autism, says that they feel like they can see details that other people can't see, that they're better at focusing on details. Do you think you, you see details that other people don't see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You can really see it in your photography. It's yes. just really... Most details, like sometimes the door gaps are kind of off from the real car. Sometimes out of air stuff, like sometimes mm -hmm. we'll be doing a a photo that's like set in like 1959 and there's like a, a modern Prius going by, I'll Photoshop it out. Yeah. <laughs> a modern telephone pole or a modern something. Even if you look at the patina, the, the, the different colors and the features that you put onto the cars, there's just such exquisite detail that most people I don't think would notice, but that you're really, really good at seeing yeah. those things. Uh, and so you get those from those pictures that you see of the older cars, and then you're, you're able to do that with your artist work. Yeah, that's amazing. So what advice would you have for somebody with autism who's really, really interested in something, but they... They're, they're really interested. Yeah. They should just keep focus on their passion and follow their dreams. Yeah. And ignore people who say that what they're doing is not right. Yeah. If I could ask you one more question, I think everybody wants to know. Uh, you know, you're starting to get a little bit older now, and I think everybody wants to know about the future if you're going to continue doing this. Are you going to continue following your dream? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yes, and by the way, what car do you drive? <laughs> <laughs> So I have a Ford F-150, oh, yeah. but I use that to pull my son's race cars. And then we just got a Toyota Sienna Hybrid Van. Yeah, to try to get extra gas mileage. But I have three kids. We have yeah, to... Good. Is it a hybrid? Yes, it is. And we love it. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, but once my kids are gone, what's the first car I should get? to gain something older. Yeah, because my dream, I told you my dream is a Cobra. Yes. That's really what I want. Be a replica or a real one? Well, I don't know if I make enough money at Notre Dame to be able to afford the real one, so I'll probably have to stick with the replica. I'd really like to get one of the ones that they race. Yeah, you but see, the thing is, if you got a replica, you probably can build it yourself, because those are, those are prior. Well, luckily I have somebody like you to inspire me, uh, that somebody like me might be able to work on those cars, yes. because, uh, uh, you're you're pretty amazing at picking that up yourself. Yeah, well, you can set anything that you want to set your mind to. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I don't know if anybody else has questions for Anthony. Anyone else have questions? <laughs> I have a microphone over here too. I'm happy to walk around. So uh, let's raise our hands, and Anthony's happy to answer this. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know where your Studebaker was made? Uh, it was made in Indiana here. You? If you had as much money as you wanted, what would be your dream car? I don't have a, none of them. Probably a shop first. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the ugliest car? I don't know. Probably the Fiat Multiply, the PT Loser. Yeah, that's not that great right either. But I have a few friends who own them, so. <laughs> you? Anthony, do you name your cars? Uh, yeah, but I'd rather not say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she named them, so she could probably tell you the names. Who's going to like the cars? Uh, 
okay, but gas is better. Yeah. <laughs> Too many people are buying electric, and by 2035, GM is going to be going fully electric. How long does it take you to complete one model? Uh, different. Oh, six out, six hours usually, because right next project is probably uh, a. a, a, a the uh, six-door 1981 Bronco. I would be like taking a few, like welding them all together. Anthony, yeah. a question. I've seen a couple of your pictures with airplanes and boats. Are you starting more into some of that as well? Yes. Okay. Um, what, yeah. what type of inspiration do you anticipate with those different things? Uh, well, you have to use string to hold them up on the ground. Going to the airport tomorrow. On the way to the airport tomorrow. You? I have a question. What other hobbies do you have? Uh, cooking. Oh. Uh, I have statements. Cooking. Uh, <laughs> what else do I have? Well, I I working on cars and taking photos and just really, making money. I don't really stick for the next photo. You? Probably tomorrow. That's a, good, a, little, a little sneak peek, right? I don't like some more yes. things about here in South Bend. Anyone else? You? What did you think of the museum here in the nice. car collection? Nice. They got some good cars that I think should be saved. Anyone else? Anthony called us up. We don't have a silver hawk in the collection. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fortunately, I'm not giving you mine. <laughs> <laughs> you? What do you think of the Avani? Cool. <laughs> I, a guy, I had one, and he sent it to the junkyard just because the fuel pump was bad. But then the junkyard fixed it, and then they sold it. Oh. We have a couple more minutes for Q&A if anyone has any other questions. And Anthony will be around afterward, too, if you want. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Oh, we have one right in the middle. Right? You? What was it like? What was it like meeting? Uh, can't think of her name. Templeton. Temple Grandin. Yeah. Temple. Yeah. What was it like meeting her? Uh, interesting. That was before I, I wasn't very popular back then, but I understand. I, I, she made me get more popular. <laughs> She's an amazing woman. Yes. You. You. How about um, this last week you met with the president of GM and he showed you some behind the scenes type things that you probably couldn't say publicly, but I'm not telling all anybody. Your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> well, right. If I told you that would be the worst because then the camera would get up and then either Toyota or Ford would find out that and then they try to copy that idea and that would be the worst. <laughs> How many people have donated cars, model cars to you? You, all the time, all over the country. I get collections, I get unwanted vehicles while I fix them up. You know, it's usually collectors who pass away and then they usually send it to me because they have there are daughters that usually don't want it. <laughs> Someone's laughing going off. Uh, you? Or Alex, do you have any questions? No. <laughs> I don't have any questions. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you no, so much. Nice spot you you. Yeah, we have time. I was just going to ask about your schooling. What grade are you in? How are you doing in I'm school? I'm homeschooled and ninth grade. I was going on to 10th grade next year. Who's coming? Uh, you, I thought I saw a hand up there. Oh, no. You? She was trying to point to me. There's one in the back. You? Room. Anthony, have you ever designed your own car? Uh, I am gonna. I'm gonna do a right looking design and then send it to the president of GM because I'm close to him now. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I just some like really good looking vehicles. A modern-looking, futuristic, all types. Uh, you know, different by design.